Now let us talk about the connective tissue. Here the connective tissue, the name itself suggests that the connective tissue helps in connecting different parts. So different parts, the movements in animal body, the animal bodies are flexible. So the flexibility is because of that, the ability of the organism to move its body parts. So the movement is possible because of different parts connected by different materials. And moreover, the connective tissue, it connects the different substances in terms of supplying the materials, in terms of communication, transportation. So that is the first one is blood. Blood is a connective tissue. Moreover, it is a fluid. So we call the blood as fluid connective tissue. Blood as fluid connective tissue. What does the blood consist of? It consists of a matrix that is called as plasma, the liquid part of the blood, which contain water, nutrients, minerals, and organic compounds like sugar, amino acid, urea, and carbon dioxide dissolved. So all these things are found in the plasma. Plasma. In addition to this, cells. What kind of cells are found? RBC, WBC, platelets. So these are the components of this blood, cells of this blood. That means here blood is a tissue which is not made up of same kind of cells, different kind of cells, RBC, WBC, platelets, they are different in their structure as well as their function. Of course, all these cells, their common aim, the common function is same, transport. But individually they perform different tasks. All together they constitute the tissue called as connective tissue, that is the fluid connective tissue. Here what do we notice is that the intracellular space is very large. Say for example if you take a drop of blood, in the drop of blood you will find so many cells, RBC, WBC and all, they are not closely packed, they are individual, free floating, freely floating cells. So this is the tissue which consists of cells which are freely floating, which do not have a fixed position to stay. So the intracellular spaces are very large, a lot of gap between cells in the connective tissue blood. The main function of the blood is to transport the materials, supply the food to different parts, collect the waste and take it to the excretory system for the filtration. So supply the oxygen to different parts, supply the carbon dioxide to the lungs. In this way, it performs the transportation function. Of course, the blood it plays in the other parts like immunity and other things. So the primary thing is that, the primary function. So let us look at the second connective tissue. The first one is blood and the second one is bone. So bone is a hard tissue which gives mechanical strength. It gives a shape to our framework, body framework that is the skeleton. So we have set of bones, a frame of bones present inside our muscles. So muscles are wrapped around the bones. So the bones they give a specific shape. The shape you have is because of the bones, because of your skeleton. So they provide mechanical strength and support. Let us see how they are made of. The bones are made up of hard matrix. The matrix of the bone is very hard and compact, tightly packed. And it is packed with minerals called calcium and phosphorus. Salts of calcium and phosphorus. Calcium and phosphorus compounds, they make up the bone. You need to have calcium and phosphorus in your diets to keep your bones strong and healthy. So bone is a connective tissue which gives mechanical strength, shape, structure to our body. And the other one, the next is ligaments and tendons. So what are these ligaments and tendons? Ligaments and tendons are the joining connective tissues. What do they join? So what is a ligament? Ligament is a material, it joins bone to another bone. So two bones are to be jointed, but there should be a, some kind of flexibility to bend it. Say for example here, we have bones in our wrist and we have bones in our lower arm. The lower arm bone is connected to the wrist of this arm. So here at this position, these bones are connected to this bone by some kind of material. So what is that material? Ligament. Even here the bones inside our hand, palm are connected by ligament. Even your palm, your foot is connected to your lower leg, leg bone by ligament. So ligament is a white tough material which join bone to bone, bone to bone. 
Then what is this tendon? Tendon is a material which join a muscle to bone. It will attach bone to a muscle. So bone and muscle are attached by tendons. Bone and bone are attached by ligament. So this is the connective tissue, ligament and tendons. And the next one is cartilage. What is this cartilage? Cartilage is nothing but a soft bone. You see that at the endings of the bones. So two bones come together for a joint. So at this joint, if two bones, both the bones, they are having a hard surface because of the friction they may wear. So to avoid that, the bones at the ends, they are smoothened by some kind of rubbery material, soft, flexible material called as cartilage, a soft bone. Even certain parts of your body, hard parts of your body are not made of bone. They are made of cartilage for a flexibility. You see your nose flap. The wall between your two nostrils is made up of cartilage here. You can bend it. You see it is hard, hard enough, but at the same time you can bend it. Even your ear flaps. The ear flaps, they have a bone which is very flexible. You can bend it. But even though you bend it, it doesn't break because it has the nature of flexibility and it is the cartilage. So even your larynx, in your throat you have the larynx. The larynx it is made up of, the voice box is made up of cartilage. So it is found in the larynx, it is found in the ear flap. It is a soft bone. This is also a connective tissue. And one more connective tissue that is areolar connective tissue. So what is this areolar connective tissue? So this is the tissue which is found in your body which will connect the different parts of your body. That means in your cavities, say this is your thoracic cavity or the chest cavity and here this is your abdominal cavity. The chest cavity has got different parts like lungs, heart and all and even your stomach, the abdominal cavity has got the stomach, intestines and all this. So these parts, they are placed in their positions. So they are not moving here and there when you are moving, if you are bending, your body parts are not falling. Your heart is not falling friend. Your lungs are not displaced from their position. They are kept in their positions. Even though you jump, even though you sit, even though you become upside down, their positions are stable. So they are stable because they are packed by some connective tissue called areolar connective tissue. So these are the important connective tissues that are found in animals. Now let us look at the muscular tissue. Muscular tissue. Here we see three different types of muscular tissue. One is striated, unstriated and cardiac. So what is the term striations? Striations are bands. If you observe the structure of these muscles, if you observe the structure of striated muscular tissue, you find striations. Striation means bands. If you see the muscle cells which are striated, you will find some bands. These muscle cells are called as striated muscles. Striated muscles. What are these striated muscles? Where are they found in our body? What is their function? All our skeletal muscles are striated muscles. Skeletal muscles. They are striated. What is skeletal muscle? The muscle which is connected to the skeleton which helps in the voluntary movements. Voluntary movements in the sense the movements which are under our control. All the muscles that you find in your hands and legs in your jaw. Say for example you wanted to open your mouth. You can open. That means you will move your lower jaw. So by that here the muscles will expand. And they contract. So by that you can operate your mouth. You can operate your hand because of the muscle contraction and relaxation. So the muscles are able to contract and relax because of the proteins, contractile proteins. Here these movements are voluntary, means they are under your control. If you wanted to lift your hand, you can lift. If you don't want, you can leave it down. So that is under your will, your control. So that is that voluntary movements, which are under our will. Voluntary movements means the movements which are under our will are executed by this muscle, skeletal muscle. So this skeletal muscle is striated. The muscle is having striations, bands. 
If you observe the slide of a striated muscle under microscope, you will be able to see some bands. The next one is unstriated or smooth muscle. The smooth muscle is found in inner parts of our body like lungs and eyelids, iris which moves and adjusted and your lungs, your digestive system, the digestion. So you know that in the process of digestion, your stomach moves in churning the food. So you are not giving any instruction to your digestive system to shake or move. They are involuntary movements, means which are not under your will. Without your control, there will be different kind of movements going on in your body. That is to carry out different process. So there, it doesn't require your decision, your judgment whether to move or not. They are not under your, your will. So those are called as involuntary movements. So where do you find these involuntary movements in the digestive system, respiratory system, respiratory system, So all these systems, you find the organs are made up of this smooth muscle. So the smooth muscles, they have that the function of involuntary muscles. Now let us see the other one, cardiac muscle. Cardiac muscle which makes up the heart and the heart has got involuntary, involuntary contraction and relaxation, heartbeat contraction and relaxation the heart contracts relaxes rhythmically and this contraction and relaxation is involuntary you are not controlling the heartbeat then why are we studying this cardiac separately why can't we include in under unstriated or smooth muscle because this is also these muscles are also having the involuntary movements they are present in the parts which have involuntary movements even the cardiac muscle is also present in the organ which has got involuntary movements. Why can't we study these two under one heading? Why are we separating as unstriated and cardiac? The reason is they have structural dissimilarity. Here if you see the structure of striated muscle, it has got bands. If you see the structure of smooth muscle, the smooth muscle will be having a long spindle shaped smooth cells. They don't have any bands. These kind of smooth cells. Nucleus at the center. That is the smooth muscle, no bands, involuntary movements. If you see the heart, the heart looks like this. The heart muscle, the cardiac muscle looks like striated muscle. So it has got an appearance of striated muscle. It has got striations, but in functioning similar to smooth muscle. So functioning of cardiac muscle is similar to smooth. Structure of the cardiac muscle is similar to striated muscles. So that is the reason why we separated it as a cardiac muscle. So the muscular tissue is of three kinds. One is striated muscle, the other one is unstriated muscle and the third one is cardiac muscle. So this is all about the muscular tissue. So we have seen the epithelial tissue and the connective tissue and the muscular tissue. The next tissue of animals which we are going to study is that nervous tissue. So the nervous tissue is made up of specialized cells called as nerves. Let us write it as nerve cells. The nerve cells, they make up the nerves. So these are the special cells. All the cells in our body, they have the property or the characteristic of response to stimulus. Response to stimuli. But whereas the nerve cells, they have very rapid, very rapid response. And not only that, the nerve cells are specialized in carrying these responses to different parts of the body. The information is carried in our body from one part to another part in the form of an electrical impulse through the nerve cells. The nerve cells, they have a peculiar shape that they have a body it's called a cell body or cyton and with an extended long branch called as axon and this one is called as cyton. And even the cyton has got certain branchings called as dendrites. And this axon, it is covered by a myelin sheath and the axon ends at narrow terminals. So this is the shape. So this kind of nerve cell is connected to another nerve cell. It forms a long network of nerves. 
a bunch of nerve cells joined together by a connective tissue to form a nerve so nerve cells are also called as neurons the neurons they join together with connective tissue and they form a nerve the nerves are associated with muscles and the nerves which are connected to the muscles they produce the response to the muscle and muscles are showing the movement the contraction and relaxation so this combination of the nerve and muscle is fundamental to any animal most of the animals they have this combination so by that they can show very quick responses very quick movements so in this way the nervous tissue consists of nerve cells which help in communication that is to pass the information in the body within the body different between the different parts of the body so this is all about the animal tissues so in this lesson tissues we have learned about the plant tissues and animal tissues so in the previous chapter we learned about cells so in connection to the cells here we studied about the tissues just you can link up the concepts and if you have a possibility just you can watch the permanent slides of animal tissues which are made permanent mounts of animal tissues like voluntary muscles involuntary muscles those are the striated and unstriated and you can find the similarities and differences between the cells in their shape and you can identify their functioning with the topics which you have learned here if you like this video please give a thumbs up please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on cbse syllabus